Um, you know, with Cosmos being called like the inner of blockchains too, I guess uh, Cosmos IPC just uh, launched uh, recently as well. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that and what that sets up for uh, Cosmos, uh, Cosmos DeFi? Yeah, so what IBC enables is for people and communities to build their own sovereign blockchain with their own token that they and their community control, but also be able to transfer it to other chains for things like swapping or exchanging or, you know, participating in yield protocols, etc. And we feel like this is the really, you know, the major breakthrough that Cosmos offers, right? Um, Cosmos tech is, you know, used by a lot of different chains, uh, currently secures over $75 billion worth of crypto assets. Um, some of those you may have heard of include Binance Coin, Terra, Crypto.com, Cosmos Hub, ThorChain. Those are all built on the Cosmos stack. And what IBC will enable is for all of these chains to connect and communicate together and send tokens across chain uh, to create interchain DeFi. Um, beyond that, it's also, you know, very environmentally sustainable, right? It's built on a proof of stake consensus protocol called Tendermint Core, you know, which is, you know, four to five magnitudes, you know, cheaper in costs than a proof of stake, sorry, a proof of work chain like Ethereum. Um, we, we really love Ethereum, but we think that, you know, a lot of transactions don't need to, you know, to occur on Ethereum mainnet. Yeah, and I think, you know, for those that haven't paid attention to, if you look at like even like the top projects out there, um, low key, <laughs> a lot of the uh, top 30 plus projects are Tendermint based projects that uh, have been building around uh, Tendermint and going to be connecting into Cosmos, you know, just name a few too. We have like uh, Binance, uh, Binance uh, Coin, uh, Terra, uh, we got Kava, uh, Luna as well. So there's a lot of amazing projects being built. Uh, Persistence also too, we just had them on. Uh, you know, there's there's been a lot of uh, projects being built on Tendermint. And I guess what you guys kind of like rapidly expanding your guys' ecosystem as well, um, are we going to start seeing all these uh, different, uh, I guess they're different Tendermint um, projects come together um, and into uh, the Cosmos IBC and, and Cosmos DeFi ecosystem? That's correct. That's the goal. So the reason why you have been hearing a lot about, you know, what Cosmos has to offer and what the Cosmos Hub has to offer in particular is because, you know, as a team and as a community, we've been focused very much on infrastructure development, right? And now the infrastructure is finally at a level where, you know, Inter-blockchain transfers has been enabled. You know, we can start actually building DeFi applications. Um, and we've been doing that for the past few months. And in fact, you know, the, the very next release that the Cosmos community is, is putting out there is called the Gravity Dex protocol. And this is an interchain exchange protocol that allows people to create liquidity pools and swap tokens, you know, that they've created themselves on their own blockchain and they have sent over to the Cosmos hub. So yeah, we haven't really fully seen Cosmos uh, DeFi quite yet. And uh, would you say that with Cosmos, uh, Gravity Dex, and Osmosis, and these other upcoming AMM and projects out there, um, we can expect kind of like DeFi liquidity, uh, Cosmos uh, uh, LP pools to start coming out and farming and participation in, uh, I guess, all these different uh, Cosmos uh, DeFi hubs and DeFi farms? Yeah, I think what we've seen in the crypto ecosystem as a whole is that you know 2021 is the year that... Um, Crypto is going multi-chain, right? Crypto is going interchain, and what Cosmos offers is the ability for DeFi to go interchain at the same time. So, beyond just an exchange, a way of exchanging tokens um, that supports IBC protocol, there is also a bridge being built to Ethereum and EVM-based blockchains. You know, like like Polygon, like like Phantom, like uh, Binance Smart Chain. Those chains will also be able to communicate to all Cosmos chains and all Cosmos chains communicate to each other. So you see where this is going, you know, a world where all chains communicate and transfer tokens with each other uh, permissionlessly. That's what we're excited about. Yeah, I think that, you know, with that idea, uh, leaving the idea behind of being like a single chain <laughs> maxi uh, out there, I mean, we're, we're living in the world where um, each of these chains can run their own transactions now separately to that will then less, you know, not clog up each of the, the protocols and networks. And then if they want to, uh, talk to each other, I guess. That's where the Cosmos IBC or like the idea of inner blockchain communication um, comes into play as well, too. You know, I think with Cosmos, uh, when I first saw you guys, too, you guys one of the first projects that kind of brought that idea together of uh, interconnected uh, interconnectivity 
uh, and interconnected uh, blockchains. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the uh, ecosystems that you're trying to build and what you're envisioning um, for that, um, for the whole Cosmos uh, uh, ecosystem? Yeah, so for the whole Cosmos ecosystem, we envision a world where you know all chains communicate and, and bring value to each other, right? So you know networks are strong based on the the variety and diversity of of economies that that go into it, right? And we believe that you know a single layer one, no matter how scalable it is, you know is never really able to capture the entire world's economy, right? Like if you're doing local transactions, let's say, you know, in, in a farmer's market in your hometown, right? It doesn't really need to be broadcast on a global blockchain to the entire world, right? That's sort of an inefficient use of resources. So we believe that you know, local blockchains, blockchain specific, to, you know, to geographic areas, is one way where you know, smaller communities can create value amongst each other, and you know, as needed, to bring this value to you know the global, global level, to global scale, depending on what products they offer, right? When it comes to let's say you're, you know, the launch of a new video game, or you know the launch of a new NFT store where you really want everyone in the world to participate, you know, there, there are chains meant for those. But if you're doing something that only a small number of people need to participate in or has a very specific audience, let's say, you know, one particular game, let's say that wants to run its own blockchain, that's where Cosmos is here for to support, you know, the long tail of blockchain use cases that really shouldn't be paying, you know, tens or hundreds of dollars on, on more expensive blockchains. So with uh, with what Cosmos is uh, building too, are we able to? I guess the question from Jesse too is like, are we able to bridge directly between like let's say like ETH and Binance Smart Chain, or right now, or is it only um, I guess for Cosmos IBC enabled uh, projects as well um, to kind of give us yeah, like where so the state is? There's of... two different protocols at play here. One is IBC. This is the one that we've been working on the longest, and this protocol allows you know it's really a chain agnostic protocol as long as you have you know fast finality, right? Which which is most if not all proof of stake blockchains are able to um, implement IBC and connect chains together without any intermediary, right? That's the whole idea of Cosmos to not be reliant on any centralized factor. But um, this other protocol that we've been working on, this team called Althea has been building within Cosmos is called the Gravity Bridge Protocol. And this is a protocol that bridges EVM chains, you know, like Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain to Cosmos chains, right? So what you're going to see is you know, a large number of Cosmos chains will be implementing Gravity Bridge. So, you know, at any point you want to enter in from an EVM chain like Polygon or BSC or Ethereum into Cosmos, you're able to do that directly. Um, and if you wanted to connect, let's say from Ethereum to Binance Smart Chain, you would likely go through the Cosmos Hub because mm. the Cosmos Hub is currently, you know, the most valuable decentralized blockchain in Cosmos. So through the Cosmos Hub, you know, you have a way to exchange cross-chain tokens, right? You can exchange ETH and BSC tokens through the Gravity DEX protocol. And you're also able to send tokens to the Cosmos Hub from Ethereum, from BSC, et cetera, with the, the Gravity Bridge protocol. And just recently, I guess, I just even saw maybe yesterday too, you guys updated like a, a brand new roadmap um, setting forth uh, uh, Cosmos and, and teeing it up for both like Cosmos DeFi and beyond as well too. Um, I guess, could you kind of like highlight what that, uh, what's the new change um, too? I guess this is kind of a, uh, the brand new set forward and how far are you guys looking forward to, you know, is this the next like five years plus of a yeah, roadmap? I'm really proud of our community. Um, our first roadmap, our first roadmap was included in the white paper in 2016 and we, mm. we finished it earlier this year with the launch nice. of IBC on the Cosmos Hub. And in fact, IBC has been enabled on, on I think seven different mainnet chains to date. And we'll see many more of those enabled over the course of the next few months. But uh, now that the white paper is done, right, what's the next step, right? The next step is actually a community developed roadmap that includes the work of more than 15 plus core entities, core companies in the Cosmos ecosystem, all working on cool stuff to bring to the Cosmos hub. So like I've mentioned already previously, the, the very next thing coming is the Gravity Dex protocol that allows for the, um, the exchange of cross chain tokens from basically any chain that, you know, either supports IBC or will support IBC in the future, right? But the very next one coming after that, you know, that's actually being voted on right now by Cosmos Atom holders is the Gravity uh, Bridge Protocol that in mm. the beginning will allow, you know, the two-way transfer of uh, ETH and ERC token, ERC20 tokens from Ethereum over to Cosmos and then IBC tokens that land on the Cosmos hub to Ethereum. 
So yeah, you'll be able to see things like uh, uh, Luna and an Atom and and Rune tokens. Nice. You know, go over to Ethereum and uh, you'll be able to trade for them on on Uniswap and such. That's yeah, really exciting to us. I know yeah. a lot of people, you know, especially in, on the ETH side, you know, wouldn't just don't really care about buying tokens unless it is available on Uniswap. So you know, that's what we're hoping to make available. Yeah, and I think with the uh, the upcoming uh, roadmap too, and it seems like you're allowing to allow uh, more staking uh, initiatives as well and, and more farming for, I guess, like Atom, Atom holders too, to yeah, participate. So beyond just exchanging and, yep. and bridging to other ecosystems, uh, another really cool feature, two really cool features um, come from the people who stake Atoms on the Cosmos Hub. So one is called staking derivatives. So it's you know, something you might be familiar with if you, if you know about DeFi on Ethereum. But generally, when you, when you stake a token on Ethereum, you do get like a, some sort of staking derivative, which you can use if you wanted to, you know, participate in, in further DeFi, right? Which would magnify your risk, um, but you will earn, you know, further, further tokens. So what this does is it allows, you know, the, the atoms, you know, two thirds of which, you know, need to remain staked on the Cosmos Hub to ensure its security to also participate in DeFi with these tokens. So we think it's a, it's a great way to encourage people who are already in the Cosmos ecosystem to be able to do more things with their tokens than just stake, which you know gives you gives you a regular return, but maybe a little bit boring because you can't do anything else with your token. Um, a lot more utility. That's, <laughs> that's definitely one way to get more utility on on the way you stake atoms. But beyond that, we also have this thing called interchain staking coming. Um, it's it's similar in some ways. So if you know Polkadot and you know how Polkadot works. Uh, Polkadot has like one relayer chain, which, you know, secures 100 other um, parachains, right? Mm -hmm. So what interchain staking is, is the Cosmos version of that. And it allows validators on the Cosmos hub to decide if they want to stake for more than one chain at the same time. And it allows people who hold atoms to decide if they want to stake their atoms on one or more chains. Mm. And of course, the more chains that you stake for, you know, the more, more rewards. rewards you'll earn, but you oh, know, okay. the higher chance <laughs> you will, you know, you might get penalized for downtime on, on multiple chains. That's actually really cool. <laughs> Being able to, yeah, stake across all the different chains too and collect there, all those there rewards. There's so much more coming. Um, there's so much more on the roadmap, but this is just a two year roadmap uh, just oh. to start with. Awesome. And two years is like already 20 years in, in, <laughs> in, in, uh, in crypto land. So yeah, it really um, is. <laughs> Um, it took quite a bit of effort to get the roadmap in place, actually, because Cosmos is so decentralized. Um, you know, as as Tendermint, we're really just responsible for um, the Gravity Dex protocol. In fact, you know, we've been hard at work building that. But all the other items I mentioned, you know, are built by other companies, other teams in Cosmos. And later uh, tomorrow, actually, we have a Cosmos uh, a demo, uh, Cosmos slash Tendermint uh, Power Hour 2 on Demo Day. For everybody that is uh, listening, we have a lot of amazing projects um, that's going to be showcasing uh, what they're building uh, on Tendermint as well, too. So uh, a lot of them, are, some of them are like uh, Cosmos uh, IBC uh, ready as well, like Akash. Uh, you got Yumi also coming present, uh, presenting and, and many more, too. So Persistence also. I'm so excited to have them, everybody um, that's listening right now. Um, let's kind of like go into. Um, I hear you mentioning about uh, the upcoming Gravity uh, Dex too, which I've been looking out, um, looking forward to, is and also the Gravity Bridge, um, which we can touch upon a little bit later. First, so we can talk about the Gravity Dex um, first. Uh, you know, how how's this new exchange different um, from the other current Dexes uh, currently right now? Um, you know, it's just like fully, uh, obviously, first dedicated to. Uh, the Cosmos uh, ecosystem um, initially, but love to learn a little bit more details of uh, this upcoming launch and when we can expect it. Yeah, so first of all, the Cosmos ecosystem is unique, right? Um, it's not just one blockchain. It's hundreds of blockchains. It's over 250 blockchains and growing. And uh, what the Gravity Dex does in comparison to, to DEXs on Ethereum today, or the DEXs that you might be very familiar with on, on other blockchains, is that it's meant to be a multi-chain DEX. That's its primary, you know, feature. And in fact, the Cosmos Hub only has one token, right? It only has the Atom token. So it's not like you're able to trade that token with itself. So what the Gravity Dex really requires is what we've built all along, the Layer 0 IBC protocol, which allows users to permissionlessly take tokens from, let's say, Terra, from Thorchain, you know, from Akash, et cetera, um, and bring them over to the Cosmos Hub, you know, create these liquidity pools with, let's say, the Atom, or you can do like, you know, an Akash, Terra liquidity pool and exchange them for each other. 
So what we think is really cool about this is, is twofold, right? One is this really hasn't been done before. Um, this has really just been the domain of centralized exchanges for the longest time, right? If you want to exchange Ethereum for BTC, you can't really do so um, for the longest time uh, unless you use a centralized exchange. Or if you want to exchange, let's say, Ethereum for Atom, right? That's really impossible today without a centralized exchange. But with Gravity Dex, you're able to do so for the first time ever. So we're really excited about that. Beyond that, um, a lot of the tokens that that we've been talking about and the tokens that we haven't been talking about, you know, like UMI, et cetera, don't even exist um, or aren't listed on centralized exchanges altogether, right? So this is really the first time you're able to buy a lot of these tokens. Which is exciting. You said that there's over 240 uh, projects building in the, the Cosmos ecosystems, which is, uh, it, that's that's a huge amount as well. So, um, you know, I, I haven't even kept, kept track of all those projects, uh, but now like, yeah, being able to um, have these projects like Yumi launch in a decentralized uh, way, whether it be like IDO or however they want to launch on just like the Gravity Dex as well, um, allows for people to to essentially be part of the projects uh, early on and 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 grow with them too. Um, and so that, I think that's what's cool about getting uh, early access and and getting access in a decentralized uh, way as well too with the Gravity Dex uh, too. Yeah, so you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be a team like Terra or Thorchain. You can, in fact, you know, launch your own blockchain on a weekend and create the token and send it to the Cosmos Hub and create a liquidity pool with the Atom. This is all stuff that requires, you know, nothing but you and a computer and, uh, you know, potentially a few Atoms to start with to pay for transaction fees. And eventually, I guess you will start uh, connecting into other, like the other popular, and another, I guess, like Ethereum chains and other uh, major chains out there too. So That's not where only Gravity Bridge comes in. Yep. Mm, okay. We'll, we'll we'll go into that a little bit uh, as well too. I know that's like another uh, big thing, um, but kind of like closing, uh, talking a little bit more about the uh, Gravity Dex as well too. Um, you know, like I, I guess. How's it uh, in terms of like differentiation between um, the experience and uh, uh, the order books and, and how it uh, functions as well too? Like how's it compared to like Uniswap? Um, you know, what are the uh, different features that you saw that might not actually, you know, a good point too is like, you know, we saw like Ethereum, you know, gas fees was at a, a all time high too with um, Cosmos uh, and, and Cosmos transactions has been much more less as well too. Um, I'm sure that that also like provided and created new like tools and options that you guys can add new features, as I say, to the Gravity Dex that wouldn't be available otherwise in like Ethereum as well. Would you would you say that there's uh, definitely advantages with what you guys seen? Yeah, so we have a couple innovations. Um, like like you mentioned before, this one is not one of them, but um, it's just much cheaper, right? Like using mm -hmm. spending a penny to send uh, an exchange <laughs> is just much better than sending you know ten dollars or forty dollars or hundred dollars. Um, so that's, that's something that I've forgotten about because, you know, I've been in Cosmos for so long, but beyond that, we also have an innovation meant for, um, liquidity providers and it's called the equivalent swap price model or ESPM. And it's just a, a slightly more efficient algorithm for price discovery, um, which reduces the amount of arbitrage, you know, that, that traders can do, but that also, you know, increases, um, the accuracy of the prices on exchanges, uh, which is, um, great for people who just want to do an exchange. So I, I would categorize that as a, an improvement in user experience. Um, but beyond that, we also have solved uh, MEV attacks. Um, so we batch process trades on the Gravity Dex, right? So they're, they're put into a batch and validators cannot choose, you know, which set of transactions they want to run first before others, right? So it's, it's much more fair to the people actually trading and, uh, it's something that we believe, you know, should be a fundamental part of any decentralized exchange. I think we had one question from Mark too, as well as will, will Adam token be utilized as like the, uh, how would it be utilized in the gravity decks as well? Obviously it would be potentially just like a trading pair too. Um, is, is there any other, um, utilities you guys are thinking about as well? Yeah. Too, so or, first of all, the yeah. Adam will have the most liquidity on the gravity decks, given that the gravity decks is built on top of the Adam and secured by the Adam. So we would expect that the vast majority of pairs and the most liquidity to go towards Atom X token pairs, right? And, but beyond that, right, given that the Gravity Dex is built on top of the Atom, um, to conduct trades, you will also need to have, you know, a few Atom. Mm, by by yeah. a few, I mean like maybe a few cents worth is all you need really. 
Nice, because that, that's uh, that's how low the the, the transaction fees are. <laughs> um, you know, we touched upon uh, on, on the gravity uh, decks too, and that kind of leads me to the next part of what you guys are launching too, which is the gravity bridge. Um, you know, we touched upon it very lightly too, but uh, let's give like a quick overview for everybody listening here too on what the gravity bridge is. And I think one of the other questions that somebody in the crowd asked you is: Is it essentially wrapping um, these other assets like ETH, wrap ETH into Cosmos. So it'd be like C ETH or something or uh, ETH, ETH Cosmos. <laughs> how, how does that look like with the, the gravity bridge? Yeah, so that's a great comment. That's exactly correct. It is basically wrapped ETH coming over the gravity bridge um, to Cosmos. And mm. uh, the gravity bridge is being proposed to the Cosmos hub today and it's being voted on by, by Adam holders, by Adam stakers. But uh, we foresee it passing, and um, it's not just ETH, right? So it's ETH, it's mm -hmm. all ERC-20 tokens, and uh, potentially in the future, you know, ERC-721 tokens. Um, but it's also not just Ethereum, right? It's built on top of Cosmos technology and also built on top of Solidity. So in fact, any, you know, any chain that supports the EVM and supports Solidity smart contracts can you know, implement the you know, EVM side of Gravity Bridge and be able to send tokens from their chain over to Cosmos chains. So we think that's super exciting. Let's see here. Uh, in terms of uh, the Gravity Dex, uh, with the with the transactions kind of uh, being so low on, on um, uh, Cosmos as well, uh, I guess, are you guys able to um, perform like cheaper ERC-20 uh, sends and, and batch transactions or how does that, uh, you know, w when you're dealing with like the ETH assets and other, other, um, you know, assumed to be like Polkadot and others as well too, um, how would that like uh, increase like the uh, ease of access and use for like Ethereum DeFi with Cosmos and vice versa? Yeah, so there are a number of projects in Cosmos already that um, will also be using the Gravity Bridge. Some of them, you know, include Somlie Finance, Umi. Um, there are also others, so they will be using the Gravity Bridge as well. And uh, what the Gravity Bridge offers are our cheaper transaction costs and uh, cheaper transaction costs for, for bridging and for wrapping uh, because it, it does bridge, you know, not bridge, but it does batch a number of ERC-20 cents together. So, you know, every so often, um, probably every few minutes, you know, a large number of transactions will come across from Ethereum over to Cosmos. And then once you're in Cosmos land, right, all of your ERC-20 tokens will be wrapped and you'll be able to send them for, for pennies across the internet of blockchains, which is super exciting. Great, great. Um, see, if, again, if anybody has any questions too, feel free to fire. We'll take a few more Q and A's as we're going through here and, and uh, wrapping up our talk about Cosmos DeFi here too. Um, I guess looking at like the, uh, the overall like developer ecosystem for uh, Cosmos, I mean, like, yeah, you guys said that you have over 240 projects still, many of them still unknown too, and, and still, uh, still about to launch. and. Uh, I expect once the Gravity Dex uh, comes out uh, as well, um, we can expect projects that are going to want to like IDO and, and come out, and that that really jump starts, um, you know, like these what we've seen these in, in other like early ecosystems in like uh, Ethereum DeFi, for example. Um, people were able to just jump from ideation to building a team um, to immediately launching um, to get uh, you know listed on uh, looks like Uniswap, and that had a huge impact in terms of innovation. And allowing people to to build uh, more in the space um, as they are able to get their uh, token live as well too, right? Um, I guess can you talk about like the developer ecosystem that you guys have built? I mean, you guys been like you know obviously you've been focusing a lot of just like building in the past like five years. You guys hit your your actual roadmap. There's not you know how many teams can actually say that they've uh, they've accomplished that as well too. Um, how does that? Uh, how does the developer ecosystem look for you guys in terms of uh, continued growth, and and what are you guys looking forward to? So our developer ecosystem is very large and growing very quickly. Um, we actually have the second largest developer ecosystem, only second to Ethereum in terms of, of you know total value of of the chains built on our technology. Right uh, today, there's over 75 billion USD worth of tokens built on Cosmos technologies, and no other ecosystem can claim that except for Ethereum. Um, so. Aside from Gravity Dex, you know, one of our biggest focuses at Tendermint is improving the developer experience of launching new chains. Because you know, no, no doubt about it, launching a smart contract is much cheaper and easier and faster than launching a new blockchain, right? It's like a sort of a, a magnitude, you know, like 10 times harder, really, right now. 
right? Mm. So how do we how do we get people to build more projects? Um, that's been a question that we've been you know working on over the course of the past year. Uh, we've been releasing a product, uh, on sort of like a monthly cadence, uh, now on I think V16 called Starport. And so what Starport is, it's sort of like Ruby on Rails for blockchain development, right? So uh, in case you're not familiar with Ruby on Rails, it's a, it's a very sort of very well-known web development framework that lets you, you know, scaffold a new web application with a few lines of code, right? So it'll create the database for you. It'll create the front end for you. It'll create the ability for you to add and remove, you know, and sort and, uh, you know, and, and view products. Let's say if you're making like a, a shopping cart product or something or like a blog, so we're doing the same thing with Starport, right? With a few command lines, command line strings, you're able to create a new blockchain with a brand new token, you know, um, with its own tokenomics, and uh, you're able to launch a testnet on your local machine all within a few minutes. But beyond that, it's also extremely powerful. It's the same technology that powers Binance Chain, same technology that powers Cosmos Hub, the same tech that powers Terra and Thor Chain, right? So we're, we're making this both accessible and also, you know, something you could really dive deeply into. If you wanted to build like, you know, a toy chain for yourself on the weekend and launch it on the <laughs> Cosmos Hub and let people buy and sell it, you can. But if you want to build something that has, you know, billions of dollars worth of value, you can also do that. And actually in early 2019, with the launch of the Cosmos Hub, what followed very shortly after was the launch of Binance Chain, built on mm -hmm. the exact same tech as the Cosmos Hub. Nice. So I'll definitely keep every posted here if we launch the DeFi Summit coin on and launch it on Gravity Dex <laughs> or the DeFi Summit DAO. I definitely or... <laughs> do it. It's, it's really cheap. Yeah, yeah, just for fun and, and try it out too. And, and and so what you talk about like the ease of development too, that's what the, the I saw like the uh, Cosmos Star part is. is it's, it's kind of building this uh, uh, easy way to uh, deploy. Um, yeah, so Starport is many things you know the, the one i've been describing is called starport cli it's a command line interface that allows mm. developers to build chains quickly but also build very valuable chains if they want to um, but we also have been trying to answer you know this is a question from the community you know where is you know where's the launch pad for cosmos you know uh what, what's the ideal platform for cosmos um and that's where starport network comes in so starport network is a chain we're hoping to to launch in q4 early q1 um, it's still an under heavy development, but essentially it's a blockchain to launch blockchains. So, <laughs> That's really meta. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. by holding tokens on the Starport network blockchain, you will, you will likely benefit from the launch of other blockchains that are built with Starport itself. So, oh, okay. That's really cool. Well, we're solving the problem right now with Starport, you know, CLI to making the development of blockchains easy. You know, the development of blockchain is only one part of launching a blockchain in the proof of stake land, right? one of the, the hardest things to get right is the initial token distribution, right? Because unlike mining, like, you know, with Ethereum or Bitcoin or other, you know, proof of, of work chains, you can't just post, you know, a link to your software and be like, hey, whoever starts mining this early, you know, will hold on to some of the, you know, or most of the initial tokens, right? Um, in proof of stake land, you really need to define all the holders of the tokens from the beginning, right? And if you make a mistake in choosing the wrong set of initial token holders, maybe they're just in it for a pump and dump or, you know, they're not really aligned with the, the vision that you have for your chain, it becomes impossible to change the, the initial token distribution. So that's what Starport Network comes in to help. It's a place, it's a two-sided marketplace to allow developers to find value-aligned investors. And by value-aligned investors, I mean people who really believe in the project, also validators who want to, you know, validate for the project. And uh, by creating this Genesis file, you know, this initial token distribution together, mm. um, both, you know, save, it'll save a lot of time because otherwise you're gonna have to, you know, make cold emails to random people and uh, maybe, you know, actually hire a, a marketing person or marketing team mm -hmm. to help you get the initial token distribution where you want. But it turns it into a collaborative you know, uh, uh, activity to really ju jumpstart and launch projects from, a from the ground up. collaborative activity. Yeah. You can even imagine yeah. it's something like, like a Reddit where, you know, if you upvote, let's say a post, it's considered you want to participate and, yeah. in this new project. So we expect Starport Network to allow for the creation of the next million blockchains. You know, we expect blockchains to be launching off the of Starport Network on a daily basis off of this platform. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, we're hitting kind of like the tail end here of our uh, chat here. Um, we'll definitely, you know, this is just the start of Cosmos uh, DeFi. Um, yeah, we were excited to hear how your guys' uh, platform uh, further develops and um, definitely love to have uh, have you back uh, on again as uh, as you guys uh, further progress on your brand new roadmap as well, too. Um, you know, everybody that's listening here too, you know, Cosmos DeFi is coming. You heard it here. For, <laughs> you heard it here. And um, I, I'm personally excited to uh, utilize the Gravity Dex and see what we could do for D, uh, Cosmos uh, DeFi farming, uh, as well as uh, connecting a lot of the other um, projects that I've been involved with, like from Luna, Persistence, Akash, uh, Thorchain, Ruin as well too. So I'm excited to actually start, um, you know, you, um, uh, connect uh, and trade uh, against uh, the uh, Cosmos and Gravity Dex too. Um, I guess in closing thoughts too, with everybody here attending a DeFi uh, DeFi Summit as well. Um, I guess yeah, would you, what would be your like last thoughts you want to share about uh, Cosmos DeFi and what people can expect? Yeah, so I would just like to say the infrastructure is done. You know, cross chain token transfers is here, and all those projects you just mentioned before, we're talking to as well. You know, we're working on ways to provide as much um, liquidity as possible um, through our efforts with both the Gravity Dex and you know, another project you mentioned earlier, Osmosis, um, is another AMM that's launching, I think, on Saturday in the Cosmos ecosystem. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, so there is, there's going to be so many opportunities for DeFi and arbitrage available on Cosmos. And then from Cosmos to Ethereum, right, soon with Gravity Bridge. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate the community and what they're all building here. I'm great, really excited great. to see what's going on with these next <laughs> yeah. events. We're excited too on our side too. So, um, well, thanks, Peng. Uh, thanks for hopping on today and today's fireside chat at DeFi Summit. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, hope to get you back on again. Thank you so much for having me, Justin. All right. Thank you.